Yeah, it's Pancho, and let's jump into today's news. Of course, we're gonna start off with some new music because more than plenty dropped tonight. The two that stood out to me the most was Corday releasing Feel It In The Air, which he actually sampled from Benny Siegel's 1982 hit Feel It In The Air, which Benny Siegel sampled his song from the real original version by Raphael Ravenscroft called Whole Lot of Something Going On. That was published in his 1979 album called Her Father Didn't Like Me Anyway. <laughs> Savage. Then the second is Coyler Ray who dropped Players which actually sampled Grandmaster Flash's hit The Message that released back in 1982. Then a few albums dropped like Lil Peep's Live Forever and actually when the album was released Lil Peep's team hopped onto social media to announce it and when they posted the cover art they explained the story behind the album too. They wrote, Live Forever was the culmination of a good year for Gus. It showcases a variety of talented producers he worked with and provides a beautiful example of the sound he was working to create. The sound of quote unquote early peep. It is a strong and definite sound, a sound that is sure of itself in the way Gus had come to by the time he made Live Forever. Some other producers had created beats that Gus asked to use. Other producers were asked by Gus to sample specific songs. Gus had a special desire for climbing up the walls by Radiohead and asked two of his go-to producers if they could sample that song in a beat for him. Soon after, Fleance created the instrumental for Pick Me Up. On Tuesday of this week, Tom Yorkie and Radiohead were gracious enough to approve the use of climbing up the walls in Pick Me Up and allow us to release Live Forever in its entirety. Gus carefully arranged the songs in a very specific order for this mixtape, even though four of them were created and added within 24 hours of Live Forever's release. He knew what he wanted and had developed an efficient way to create his music, sinking over beats in the middle of the night so no one could hear him, though I didn't pretend not to if he asked. This is a shiny piece of work made by a boy in his bedroom who had turned 19 on November 1st, 2015. Thanks to all the sample artists, Gus's producers, and features that had a role in making this release happen. Now let's get into today's news. Starting off with Glorilla, The Breakfast Club interviewed her earlier today. I don't want to spoil any of it, but I do recommend to at least give it a listen. It's one of just one of the first times where I see her in the more serious light that lets me see her being involved with this music world on the main stage for the long haul. Next, sticking with The Breakfast Club, they jumped on a call with Cardi B. Cardi. They were talking about music with her and the conversation about her next album came around the table. She said that she got a release in next year but in the meantime she feels like it's missing something. Just as a reminder her first album Invasion of Privacy released back in April of 2018. That was when J. Cole released KOD and a little after Drake released Scorpio. Uh huh yeah. It's been some time Cardi. At one point in the conversation Charlamagne asked Cardi B if she wanted to guest host this show with them the week of its release and she sounded extremely ecstatic. Granted most of us would too. They bounced around some ideas and eventually hung up not too long after. So and we'll see if it's happening. Still staying on The Breakfast Club, Ashanti popped up to get interviewed. Of course she spoke about a lot of interesting topics, except, except one of them stood out the most like a sore thumb. She revealed that a producer who she'd been making music with for weeks requested his payments to be in sex, and if not, he's charging her $40,000 per track. She didn't say who specifically, but in a future memoir of hers or documentary, she says she'll be exposing him on that. Following that, we got another breakfast. No, 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 I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. <laughs> no more Breakfast Club interviews for right now. That's, that's it, I promise you. But we do have an interview that Ice Spice did with Erica Badu. In the interview, Ice Spice was asked a variety of questions starting from when she was a kid to her take on music. On the lines when they were talking about music, Erica Badu said, in traditional hip hop as a B-girl, it's a sin if somebody else writes your raps. It's like, what are you doing? Why are you here in the building? But today it doesn't matter that much. It's about getting the message across. Do you write your raps? Ice Spice said, for sure. I wrote much myself and Bikini Bottom, the song that's about to come out. I write all my music. My producers help me when we're in the studio together and we're bouncing ideas back and forth, but I don't like to accept references. If I'm gonna work with a writer, I like for us to build it from scratch. Not so long after they asked her those questions, they did ask a few follow-up questions, which I feel like it did go under people's radar, but hey, listen, listen, that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to bring you the news. They basically asked her, you know, what can we expect from you next year? She stated, there's gonna be a new body of work and it's going to include drill tracks. It's gonna have some trap. It might have a surprise in there. She then added, and hopefully a feature, but if not, it's still gonna eat regardless. And fire visuals attached with that too. Lastly, for today's headliner news, it goes to Jay-Z. Here's an update on his recent battle with Duce. TMZ reported that Jay-Z offered to buy out their half of the 50-50 agreement, which was priced at 1.5 billion dollars. Let me remind you that at one point both sides did evaluations of the brand. Bacardi evaluated their brand at roughly 460 million dollars while Jay-Z evaluated the brand at 2.5 
billion dollars. That's like roughly 40 times more than Bacardi's evaluation. He then offered to buy out their half of the 50-50 agreement for $1.5 billion. A price like that, a majority of us would have folded, except not them. It is stated that by the article that Jay-Z is saying he's getting played. Truthfully, if we were in Hope Shoes and we threw the offer on the table like that and it wasn't accepted, uh, most of us will probably feel like that too. Besides that, that's it for today's news. I'm gonna have some extra clips playing in a bit, so stay tuned for that. If you could just subscribe to this channel and share this video to anyone or everyone, it'll be greatly appreciated. Shout out to Fat Joe, Soy Pancho, y ya. Oh. <laughs> You're, You're different. I'm not even different, bro. <laughs> Bruh? I <laughs> said, bruh. <laughs> you're different, bruh. Yo, you're different, bruh. Show me one. Cash one. Cash one? <laughs> Bottoms. Sky. <laughs> Sky is different, bruh. I ain't gonna lie. My first birthday gift. Chill sure now. Boy, coach. Slow it down so y'all can see what it's saying. Webster! Yeah, nigga. Stop playing, nigga. Stop playing, nigga. Yeah, nigga. Five goals at the top, nigga. Ah, diamonds all around, nigga. Yeah, nigga. Stop playing, nigga. Yo, Trey. Yo, Trey, look what I just got. You know, you know, Trey got that watch. I like what Drake like. I like what Drake like. I want to feel like Drake. I want to be like Drake. Can I be like Drake for a day, please? You know, Pukiso, I'm very small. You know, Pukiso, I'm a little bit. 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 Okay. Ooh. 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 <laughs>